Freakers Ball, y'all. Hey, how y'all doing? This is Grimmier here. It is Freakers Ball, uh, live right here on this Friday night, August 28, 2020. <sighs> Made it through another week. Survived another week. Hopefully you all did, too. Well, I guess if you're here listening, you did, but uh, uh, if not, <laughs> then... then uh, Oh boy, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take care of this before it gets out of out of view, because Matt over here in the chat said something, and 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 uh, I, I just think it needs to be quoted, uh, because well, <laughs> he, 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 he believes he believes that that Democrats take care of the needy, heal the sick, are honest, and are good people. Oh, my. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even have words for that. It's just, it's, uh, well, anyway, how y'all doing out there? <laughs> it's Freaker's Ball. Uh, so welcome to everybody here in the chat. If you're not in the chat, come on over. Uh, jump on in. You can get there from uh, reallibertymedia.com or rlmradio.xyz. Uh, and, and you can talk to all the great people that are here. There's always a good group in here. Uh, we got some f fun folks here tonight. We got Rob Works and the Moose Girl, the Barman. Hey, Barman. Benoit. Uh, yeah, Benoit. And uh, yes, of course, Matt WJ2002, uh, uh, a.k.a. R Rome's, a.k.a. Trust No One. Uh, ben, Benny, Ben, Ben. What's going on? Vanna White's here with us. Uh, I know Kate's out there somewhere listening in. Uh, all, all various other folks. Mr. Meisterbrow. Um, let me, I'm just scrolling up and looking to you. Woodman! Oh, that, that is Meisterbrow. Just under a different name. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, everybody is out there that I see chatting. There's a whole bunch of other people in the list there, but I don't see them chatting at the moment. Or haven't seen them chatting in the recent moments. So anyway, uh, hopefully you're all doing well in, uh, uh, avoiding most other humans as best as possible, because, as you know, they are disease vectors, humans. So stay away from them. Um, <laughs> now, earlier this week, earlier this week, I uh, was my birthday. I turned sixty. Yeah, sixty. Uh, but the date. See, the thing. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning that, not that anybody here doesn't already know that, but but the reason I'm mentioning that is the day before my birthday. Is is a woman, a girl, a gal, a friend of ours, named Beth Z, uh, who used to hang out here all the time, who doesn't any longer, but she's still out there somewhere in the ether. Anyway, on uh, Saturday, I was down there at the old post office here in town, and and I, I came I came I came across an envelope address to be from New Brunswick, Canada. So she she sent me this card. New uh, best best Z did. Uh, it's an old guy. Ouch my back. Ouch my shoulder. Ouch my neck. Ouch my knee. <laughs> it says another birthday. Oh, and and apparently uh, she knows that I lost a tooth, so she must have been listening from time to time. Yeah, Beth, I did. Uh, all is well up there. She says all is well up there in the Great White North. Uh, so, uh, happy birthday again, Beth, uh, our 20, our 20, my 20. <laughs> it was a fine birthday. Hope yours was too. Uh, and, uh, you should stop by sometime. Say hi. It'd be cool. People, the, the people would love it to see you around. Anyway, so happy birthday, Beth. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It's cool to, to hear from her. She, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we always got along really well and I like Beth. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, let's see. What's going on in the news? Ah, who cares? Um, what's going on on RLM, uh, this week? Uh, well, we had a little issue there, uh, coming up last weekend where we were getting some errors and, uh, so I went, I, I went in there and I, and I swapped out a couple of things, uh, and to, to try and fix it. And it looks like that, that, Helped them go away. Although I don't think the problem was with uh, RLM. I think it was somebody else. We we run a on a shared hosting server, 
And uh, so if one of the other people that are running on my server, they usually run six or seven uh, various um, domains or sites uh, on a particular shared hosting server. So if one of those other people was doing something uh, to slow down the server, it would have caused that problem. Either way, I tried to do the best I could to eliminate those uh, errors that were popping up. So I think I got it. I haven't, I haven't seen much of it since then. So uh, hooray for that. Um, what else is going on? On RLM, anything new or interesting or cool? Oh, yeah, new and interesting and cool. Starting on Monday, um, I will be back with a with a with a new episode of uh, It's All Connected. But I say I, but I mean we will be back with a new episode of It's All Connected, meaning myself and the lovely Miss Circle. Yes, yeah, Circle O, uh, Circles will be joining me uh, as a new co-host uh, for the It's All Connected program. And it will no longer be at 7 p.m. Eastern on Mondays. It will be at 2 p.m. Eastern. Middle of the afternoon for me, a uh, different time for y'all, uh, depending on where you are, of course. There's not many mountain time zone folk out there like myself. But uh, if you're east of me, it'll be uh, 1 in Central, 2 on the East Coast. Or uh, eleven on 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 uh, Pacific time, uh, or if you are in the Mountain Time Zone and I just don't know about it, it's noon, high noon. Myself and Circulo, and we'll be doing uh, uh, some some. Uh, who knows what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something. Uh, and you know, I was I, I, I this kind of came up. I was uh, listening to the to the uh, RLM stream one morning, and sometimes I do that. I get up in the morning when I start my. Uh, my various browsers on various computers, um, uh, two of them have uh, the, 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 the show starts playing on on different sites where, where I have it embedded. Um, but anyway, I was listening to one of the shows, and it was me and Circle uh, doing uh, a show called Perspectums, uh, which, which was fun and cool. And I thought, hey, we're, we're pretty good together. We do a good show. So uh, she was there in the chat at that time, and I said, hey, we do a good show together. We should do a show. And she said... To me, she told me, I offered you that a couple months ago, and you never replied. I thought you didn't like me. No, no, I love you, sir. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, she, uh, uh, so we talked about it and said, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Uh, that. That'll be fun. That'll be cool. Um so uh, that's that's news for Real Liberty Media. Um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? I don't know. Well, let's just play some music, and then we'll come back, and and hopefully Moose Girl will be ready. She's going to join us here shortly. But let's go ahead and play a music set to get things kicked off in the proper direction here. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, enjoy these, and uh, I'll be back. Yep. <laughs> Trampled by turtles there for the moose girl. Ain't no use in trying. Uh, before that, we had Judas Priest doing the Sentinel off the Epitaph uh, DVD set there. Uh, yeah, great stuff, man. Rob, oh, tearing it up. Uh, and we kicked it off there with... Uh, uh, from, from the Playing for Change group, I guess you could say, uh, all along the Watchtower, the Dylan tune. Uh, Warren Hayes is in there, yeah. That was a uh, kind of a dual request. Moose Girl and Cowboy Tech both re requested that one. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's great stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so Moose will be calling in in, in a in a short, short moment or three here. So, uh, uh Stick around for that, of course. Stick around for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. I hear a I hear a ring a ding. I hear a ring e ding, and I I hear a I hear a click click. Hola. Hola, Miss Moose. How's it going, Grim? Oh, it's going fine. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. Okay. You know, cool. Made cool. it through another week. Always, um, always good. 
and happy birthday. I know it was Monday, but I just want to say it on Freakers. All right. You know, it's a big, the big, it's a big one. Yeah. Uh, way to go, man. Six zero, man. Six zero. Yep. Way to go. Hawaii six zero. Oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, I hate Mall America. Oh God. What? I hate Mall America like with a passion. What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, Matt saying Mall of America in there. Oh, in the chat. <laughs> oh God, that place is so. Oh my God, it's over the top, dude. Okay. It's so expensive, and it's all... Well, when it first opened, it was all this stuff fucking made in China and shit. This yeah. overpriced crap, basically. And clothes, and designer clothes, and just... <laughs> I hate it. I hate... Well, I just don't like malls in general, really, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I was a kid, I liked them, you know, as a teenager in the 80s. That's what we did. We went to the mall. That's what we did. Really? That's okay. one of the things we did. Yeah. All right. All no, right. Rosedale, or back in the day, I lived in the Northeast. There used to be a mall called Apache. We'd go there. Uh, well, we'd, we'd go, go roller skate. We did a bunch of stuff. We'd, we'd go but hang out. We'd, we'd ha the, hang oh, out at the beach. We would hang out at the beach. Yeah, we'd go to the beach a lot in the summer. We yeah. would. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, was like, was, go ahead. I, I just wasn't a mall person. Um, right. <laughs> um, lake, I would go to some of the lakes in the cities. Um, my mom was really, she was really a great mom. She, or she still is. <laughs> She's still here. Um, anyway, she, uh, she had us in activities. I was in Girl Scouts. I mean, we did so much stuff. We went to like church camp in the summer or we go to girls, I'd go to Girl Scout camp or, we, you know what I mean. We did a lot of stuff. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just say, and not that this applies to you, mm -hmm. but um, there was a huge difference between beach girls and mall girls. No, oh, I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> yes, I do. Because well, especially you being from California, Grim. Mm -hmm. See, that was back in the Valley Girl days, like you know, in past times at Ridgemont High came out. <laughs> Uh, there was none of that. These were all. The val you, know. you didn't have the Valley Girl talk. No, thing? not San Diego. Oh, no. Okay. No, um, and, and, and I think that came after. Okay, oh, yeah, because you're I, a little bit older than me. You're I like seven I, years I, older. I think the, so. the Valley Girl crap was the '80s. Right, that yeah. was my era. Yeah. The Valley Girl. So, I, I so was, what are you know, talking about then? I'm talking about partying. <laughs> yeah, I hear ya. The Beach, Beach Girls partied, right? Beach, Beach Girls partied and and and, uh, and did other things. Um, but the the mall girls, they were just I don't know, they're just a bunch of clicky little bitches that yeah, out. materialistic cunts. Yeah, I want nothing to do That's with them. That's what I call them. <laughs> <laughs> I want nothing to do with them. Uh, they, they're all fake. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. Materialistic. Yeah, the girls down at the yeah. beach, man, they they knew how to they knew how to party. Yeah, I'm sure they did, them beach girls. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Yeah, it was different. Rock and roll. That must have been fun. Yeah, you know, rock and rollers, punks, you know. That must have been a blast, dude. Yeah, yeah. And it was, I think I think maybe that's the difference, is the, the people that went to the beach, they were mm -hmm. rock and rollers, pretty, pretty much rock and rollers. And the, right. ones, the ones at the mall were, were disco. <laughs> I don't like the Menominee Walmart. It's laid out so different than the Eau Claire one. Like, I went there for one time recently to get my son some meds. Yeah. And I'm lost in there. I'm like, it's Walmart. How can it be so different? You know? Yeah. I mean, I found what I needed and shit, but I just get disoriented in there. I'm like, <laughs> the Menominee one. I don't like it. But I had to go in there because he... <laughs> We had a COVID scare, so I went and got him a bunch of meds and shit, you know, vitamins. You yeah, know. yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's so weird how they're always different, you know. I guess, Like the yeah. one in Hat Lake Halley is different than the one in Eau Claire. It's so dumb. It's uh, like, yeah, oh, that... some shit's been going on at Walmart in Eau Claire lately, though, with all this craziness and stuff going on. Yeah. Like every day, like I, if, when I listen, if I listen to the scanner, mm -hmm. I swear at least twice a day the cops are called to Walmart in Eau Claire. Oh. Like they have men, like oh, a naked man rolling around in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> like, great, 
just, you know, this is why part of the reason, like, being a cop would suck. You'd have to go to these kind of calls. <laughs> well, you know, here's the deal. Who, here, here's my deal on that. Who's he hurting? Who's he hurting? He's not hurting anybody. All right, so let him roll. He's naked, though, Grim. So, 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 you know. let, so let him roll around and make it on the grass. Who cares? He's high on meth or something, you know, or drunk or whatever. Who well, knows? You but, know, unless, yeah, unless, I mean, unless he starts messing with somebody, just let his, right. let his mean, naked ass roll people, around on the grass. Right. Well, we <laughs> talked about this a few months ago when all this COVID shit started, how people are over-calling the cops. For yeah. stupid shit, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Sure, I mean, sure. it's just like mind your own business. You but, know but I fucks. did, I did see a, a video, might have been yesterday, day before. It was mm-hmm. one of one of the uh, Minneapolis WalMarts. Yeah, where there was just hordes of people just going through there, smashing shit, stealing everything they could. Oh yeah, it, it was a riot inside the Walmart, and I was like, well, that's because. Some guy committed suicide, and it got leaked on social media that it was the cops did it. The cops killed him. Right, right. But there's video of the guy killing himself, but they freaked out anyway in Minneapolis and started rioting again. Yep. You know, it's just like, I mean, looting and wow. stealing and shit is uh, not yeah, going to solve the problem. That, that, that's, okay? the, that's the thing that I'm thinking. I'm watching this, this video, all these people just... I mean, they go through, they're grabbing anything they want and just smashing everything else. Um, and I'm like, who, who, where? What does this accomplish? Yeah, you're, you're looking for justice? This is going to bring it somehow? Right, this is not I, the I, way I, to I, do, I mean. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, I don't either. And it's just like, be, okay, I understand the anger part of it, okay? I do. I get that. Sure. I get that, but this is not the way to bring change, people. Absolutely, this is this craziness. It's, it's not. It doesn't accomplish anything. It makes you got you people look really bad. It makes your cause look less than it should be. You know what I mean? Well, it just looks and, like you're just trying to, you know, just, right. just just trying to steal a bunch of crap and right. and, and, and break stuff. And what the fuck's wrong with you? All of a sudden, because you're pissed off, you're going to steal shit. That makes no sense at all. No, it looks more like. They're just waiting for anything to happen that gives them an excuse to go out there right. and, and and do bad shit. Well, I was talking to my son, Zach, and his friend today because they yeah. stopped right here. And I'm not confused. What am I confused about? He's probably not even listening. Anyway. Um, and he said he was confused, not you. What I told them, and I reminded so them of this fact, and this is you're really con- how I feel. You're, you're confused about who's confused. Right. I said to Matt and his, or Zach and his friend, I said, you know, I've been doing this Freakers Ball show for 12 years, 13 years, and if we wanted to, we could have talked about one thing, all, the whole show, all these years, and that would be police brutality. Yep, week after week after week. Week after week, for 13 years, we could have talked about just that subject. And it would have filled the show easily. Yes. So... And I said to the boys, I said, um, the government perpetuates racism to keep us divided. They use racism as a tool to keep people divided. They use sex, they use money, they use religion, they use all these things to keep people divided because if we're not divided, we're harder to control. Well, not only that, but then we see the problem is them. Yes. (laughs) And I said... This is not, they, Black Lives Matter has made it about race, okay? Well, it's But it's because... really not. It's about, it started out being about police brutality, but then it got twisted into becoming an issue on race. Well, it was okay? co-opted. It was co-opted almost yes. immediately. Same, right. thing, same thing happened with Occupy Wall Street. Uh, they, they started out with a kind of yep. a good idea, and they immediately got co-opted by, by the... Uh, yep. Hate to call them socialists, but I don't know another word for them. So uh, it's George Soros and his gang, his group, yes. uh, that that co-opts these these protest groups and turns them into uh, everything uh, that 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 you thought was good is actually bad, and right. and you have to go out and just destroy randomly in order to make your point, which is of course that's not what it's about. Um, but uh, that, that's that's the way they pass it off. And if you look, 
they all have that same hand symbol, that that raised fist symbol, and that yep. goes that goes way back uh, for for decades uh, that they've used that symbol, and it's the symbol from that that very same George Soros group, um, and they just apply it to what, whatever group is, yes. is getting all the media play at whatever point in time. Yep. So. Uh, that, and but, I also said, and Zach even brought up this point, he's like, okay, that 17-year-old psycho in Kenosha that was kill, killed two people and a man lost his arm? Right. Uh, Zach, Zach's like, where was his parents? Oh, she was waiting in the car. And I'm, oh, she was with him? Yeah, she drove him down there. She was oh, waiting. Oh, I didn't see that part. She, she, she was in the car waiting. She drove him home. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, where was his parents? Right there. <laughs> okay, but they know it's a crime for him to have that weapon <laughs> under 18. They oh, know that. You would think so, yeah. They, they should. Right. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> I of course, just, of course, and they're gonna have a really hard time proving that first shot. Those that first guy he killed, he shot that fucker five fucking times. He fractured his pelvis. That's how close he was to the guy. Right. Well, you know, see, you the know, thing. I mean, it was brutal, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was yeah. brutal. See, the, the and, thing that the cops, the cops, never questioned him or saw anything about, uh, bad about him. No, they he had, right by him. He was holding this, you know, I, they but they were him. confused. They were going to the victims. They were going, they, they didn't, they didn't realize he was the one that, I don't know what the thinking was there. The, I have the, no the cops, idea. The it cops, was, the cops handed him a bottle of water. And well, they, they were driving by, but they, yeah, they, they, they don't just handle the guys with the ar fifteen water. They were handling other people water. Well, that, but they, they said specifically. They said, oh, a good job. We appreciate it. Yeah, that. specifically to him. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so he thinks he's got a right to go kill two people and, and, and maim somebody. Yeah. What the fuck? I, I'm sorry. That was wrong. That was bullshit. That's that kid. He wrecked his fucking life. Why? Well, it's good. I, I mean, he he was messed up. It's good that he's not going to be wind up being a, another cop out there with a gun. Sure, you're happy cop. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking he could get I mean, away with it. Right? I didn't know the parents were with the fucker. And his mom was a cop too. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that explains a lot right there. Yeah, I mean, it. and I said to Zach and his friend, I'm like, some psycho 17-year-old running around with an AR-15. That's just not, that doesn't, that's Look, not I, got, I got I got no problem with 17-year-old. I, I don't care if he's got an AR-15, yeah, but. I, yeah, I don't, I don't care. They're, they're, I don't, I'm not against guns. I'm just, I, you know, what but, a bad situation. But if you're crazy, then you're probably. Right, you know, right. You know, <laughs> Which he, I mean, he seems like he, uh, it seems like he was crazy to me. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Ben says it was self defense. Um, no, it was not. Not uh, the first one. You know, here's the, the, here's the thing. I was yeah. watching it go down live on YouTube. You guys. It, it, I saw the whole fucking thing. You know, if you get get in your car in Illinois and you drive over to Wisconsin, Wisconsin to where Wisconsin. the tr where the trouble's at. Yep. And you get out and you start walking around looking to, yep. to, to for trouble. You're right. gonna find trouble in that situation. Oh, he says, "Was it not? It was." Oh, okay, Sorry. it was. I, okay. I read you wrong, Ben. No, yeah, it, it was he, not he self. Okay, the, the guy who he shot in the arm, that was kind of self defense. Because no, he was armed, he had a gun. Well, not only was he armed, but he was grabbing for the guy's gun. Right. Yeah. So, and he had already knocked him down. So he had knocked him down. He was grabbing for his gun, and, and the guy. Shot him in the arm. So the, the fact that the guy that got shot was armed is really here nor there. The right, because he's not dead. He's alive. But he did lose his arm. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he took a huge chunk out of it. He uh, did, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, it, yeah. So he was, he was, uh. The first guy that they shot, he shot. He, he, if you read the report, the the complaint that they filed on this, it's bad. I mean, it was, he, that guy was, he was, there was no way in hell he was going to live, survive. Right. And then the second guy that he killed, he killed him instantly because he, it was a direct shot right to his heart. Yeah. 
And he like kind of it's so heartbreaking to watch it because he kind of stumbles away, he just crumples to the ground. He's but dead, but you right know there. the other the other thing, the real the real disgusting thing on this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, compi- compounded disgusting things. That first guy that got shot, Jacob. Uh, what's his last name? Uh, Rosenbaum. No, no. Oh, Jacob Blake, the guy that's Blake. paralyzed yeah, by, by okay. the cops. Yeah, Jacob yep. Blake. Okay, uh, there are there, now all of the the cop lovers are out there trying to justify it. Well, he had a knife in his car. See, uh, I told Zach, because Zach asked, he's like, what was his record? I go, it's really irrelevant because it had nothing to do with his past record, really. Right, and absolutely it's nothing. It's in it. Yeah. No. And so, uh, he, he moved to Kenosha, you know, to get, make, you know, turn his life around, and people can change, you right. know. And anyway, though, though they're saying, uh, because the guy had a knife in his car, which the cop knew nothing about, uh, it was fine for the cop to shoot him in the back eight times. It was like, what? What? Did well, you watch that? He was holding his shirt. Yeah, and shoot him. He grabbed him. a bam, hold bam, of bam. his tank top, and he's holding him so he can shoot him in the back better. It's like, dude, come on. Right, so uh, so, so these people, these cop lovers out there, uh, cop apologists, cop suckers, whatever you want to call them, uh, we're, we're all saying, well, he had a knife in his car. That's it. He deserved to get shot in the back eight times. It's like, no. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not deserve to get shot at all. Uh, but, uh, so, you know, that, that's, the, uh, that's so the way it goes. I guess some people aren't aware of the situation that went down in Kenosha and these people getting murdered by a psycho 17-year-old with an AR-15. Right. Like, if you haven't heard about that, I don't know where you're... How you you know it's been in the headlines all week. I don't know how to get you a link here. Uh, just uh, oh yeah, he heard about it. Okay. Yeah, well they had they had no reason to take him down in the first place. All he did was he was walking walking to his car, and and the cops told him to stop or whatever. He didn't stop. He just walked to his car. So because yep. because he disrespected the badge, yeah, that that that's enough right there to, to kill anybody. You disrespected yeah. the badge, you're gonna die. So, yeah, of course. Well, yeah. Just try to. I don't know, Kyle Rittenhouse. Look it up. I don't know. Yeah. It's been all over the news. Yeah. But anyway, um. Yeah, so, I just I I enough is enough with this shit. Okay. Oh, it's this crazy. rioting doesn't do any fucking good for any fucking buddy. Okay. Mm-hmm. It makes the riders look really fucking bad. It makes you people look psycho, okay? It really fucking does. Yeah. It makes you people look fucking motherfucking psycho. Right. And you're getting in people, white people's faces if you're black. And when they're sitting down eating food or something, and you're getting up in their face and you're fucking yelling at them and you're fucking telling them they're a racist. Why? Because they're not out there being dumb like you? <laughs> it doesn't make them a racist, okay? Right. Just because someone's white doesn't mean they're racist, okay? I'm so tired of hearing about this shit. Sure. I'm just so sick of it. People need to grow the fuck up. Absolutely. Seriously. Hell yeah, no question. The so, last thing we need is this shit. This division amongst people and everything. And, and of course... You know? Of course, his attorney is going to say it was self-defense. I mean, well, right. well, he's going to say that's what he's hired to do. I, I mean, they defend got they, them. They got it all on video, but trying to call that self-defense is that first one. They're not going to be able to prove that was self. It was not self. He murdered that guy in cold blood, dude. Yeah, he walked right up to him and fucking shot him five times. One of the shots was in his hand. The guy was trying to protect himself. Okay, right. right. He wouldn't get shot in his hand. He was trying to protect himself. That's why he got shot in the fucking hand. Right. Think about that. Fuck. Yeah. And then, like, the the, the Democratic governor that we have in the state. What's his name? Tony Evers. Okay. He, he, he wouldn't call in... It, the, you know, this shooting of these people happened, like, on night four. You know, and he told the cops basically to stand down. Mm-hmm. But then he finally called in the National Guard, and that didn't do any good. 
And it's just like, dude, what are you fucking doing? You're telling the cops to stand down? Why would you tell them not to use, or he didn't, stand down is the wrong word. He said something like they're not going to use force or something. And I saw a cop on some YouTube video let some anti motherfuckers just walk yeah. in with Kenosha. And I'm like, okay, I guess it's okay to be anti and burn shit and loot shit. What I don't get it. Well, where where was the uh, where was the mayor of Kenosha and all this? I don't know. I haven't heard nothing. Yeah, about because the mayor I mean, Kenosha. Uh, basic, been ba- ba- yep. Basically, the the mayors are in charge of the police departments. So the mayor could have told them to get out there and stop this crap. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I had yeah. to mute for a second. All right. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, you know, Rob, I don't. It looks that way, but to me, I watched it. Okay, I was watching a guy that could have been shot himself. He was that close to it, and I saw it went go down. Well, he was being chased down. He at, was at, being chased, but it. it but <laughs> after it, after he shot the other guy, he was being chased. Yes. After he shot the first guy, he ran to that scene because he heard. What sounded like windows of cars being smashed out, so he ran there to that person that he shot, that Jacob Rosenbaum dude. Yeah. I watched it. I watched it. I I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's going to get away with it. I don't think he's, they're going to be able to get self-defense to stick on that first one. Maybe the second one, because the one guy that had got shot in the arm did have a handgun on him. Yeah. But he only lost his arm. He didn't lose his life. Right. So, I don't know. It should be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah, see, it's a bad thing, though, because, I, I mean, if you if you look at his, you know, background, profile, whatever, he, yeah. he, was, he had all this cop crap posted all over his, I think, Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so he was all, like, pro-cop, and he's a white guy. So that, those are strikes against him right there. Yeah, uh, those are, those are it's both not gonna, I don't think it's going to go well now, for him. Now, somebody said he was a Trump fan, as if that makes a difference, but apparently it does in today's uh, political climate. Because if he's a Trump fan, then he's automatically a bad guy and probably a murderer. No, he was... <laughs> the, 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 it was a plastic bag that was thrown at him. It didn't t- touch him. It didn't hurt him at all. It was a yeah, fucking see, plastic uh, bag. Uh, that's you... not bullshit. It did happen. That's on camera. No, 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 no. He's saying it's a distraction. It, it's, it happened, oh. but so what? I mean, well, what, what what's a plastic bag going to do to anybody? Um, right. No, he... They threw a bag at him because he was running over to the sound of car windows breaking. Okay? He wasn't... And those people, too, were running towards that area because they heard the same sound. He, it looks like he's being chased down, but he's really not. He is running to that area, same as those other people did. So it looks like he's being chased, but I saw him walking. Like, shortly before this happened, he was interviewed by somebody. Okay, and he starts walking down the sidewalk saying, medic, medic, and then he hears car windows breaking out. And then he starts running towards that area, and a bunch of other people started running toward that area too, dude. Okay, you didn't watch the before part of the, the, the scene. You just saw the clips that they put on out on, on the internet. Net. You didn't see the whole thing. You know what's confusing? I'm just saying, that's what happened. Uh, I it, watched it. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what's confusing to be here? In all the first uh, images and pictures and stuff we saw, yeah, he was wearing these blue rubber gloves. Yeah, blue nitro gloves or whatever. Well, whatever. Uh, and all the other pictures, he's not wearing those anymore. Hmm. So what happened there? What? what, what I don't what? know. Did they like Photoshop them out? Or I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm looking at these pictures on the Daily Mail. That article you posted. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And he's just walking around. You know, he's got you know regular bare hands. So, yeah, I uh, I see that. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, okay, see, now well, they're fucking with shit or something. Yeah, well, I don't well, know. What's the, but... what's the deal with that? <laughs> All I know is that 
you didn't watch unless you saw the whole thing go now because he was just casually seriously he was casually walking down the sidewalk saying medic and then all of a sudden you can hear what sounds like car windows being busted out and he starts walking faster and then starts running toward that area and you hear him say someone takes a shot and he so and then you hear someone say fuck you and you hear like four other shots go off that's when he killed that guy okay yeah and he is not a cop he had no business doing that to take the law in his own hands like that fuck that he wasn't, that was not self-defense. He ran over there because he heard car windows being broken out, okay? Yeah. And there was other people running over there, so it looks like he's being chased, but he wasn't. And that's all I'm saying. Right. I, I saw it happen. I watched the whole thing happen. Live. And that's what happened, okay? And you know, they want you to think something else, but that's not, it's, no. Okay, another another thing that was confusing, just a little bit confusing mm-hmm. to me. Uh, earlier this week, I did like a demographic look up there on the uh, on Kenosha. Yeah, and it's like ninety percent white. Yes, and so and so, well, I, I, I don't know where did I, where did they get all the people to get out there and protest? All the black people they so they arrested well. There's a story that even came out on WEAU, my local station. They arrested nine people. On their way to Kenosha with gas cans and all this bullshit. This is what they do. They show up at these places that have some incident with the cops go down and then they raise holy fucking hell. Okay? That's what they do. Yeah. I don't know what that is, Matt, but I don't want to know and whatever, dude. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, <sighs> I'm just like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly, Rob. Agent provocateurs. Yep, exactly, Rob. That's what they do. They show up, and it's BLM. I mean, it's Kenosha. Kenosha's like this peaceful little town. It ain't, it ain't nothing. And you know what I said to, to Matt the other day? I'm like, you know what BLM stands for? He's like, what? I'm like, burn, loot, and murder. <laughs> I mean, it's a meme going around. I didn't make it up. Yeah, yeah, it's good though. It's a good one. But it's like really, you guys are. Yeah. Just yesterday, or it was Wednesday, I believe, that they arrested those nine people. Um, someone called in because they saw them filling up gas cans, and they had out-of-state plates, and they were driving like a minivan, a bread truck, and a black school bus. Mm. And they travel around to these areas, and this is what they do. They start this shit because they know people are probably pissed off about what happened, and they see an opportunity, and they go there. And that's what they do. Right. And they get paid for it, too. Yeah, they're getting paid. <laughs> There's Someone's getting paid for it. Yeah, they're getting paid to go out there and raise hell. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but did I say about the militia group in Illinois that put out a Facebook post? They were asking for help to protect businesses in Kenosha. And that's how his this kid, the 17-year-old, and his mother, apparently, decided to go there. Okay? Yeah. So, it wasn't just... It was, it was, they were provoked to go there. Okay? They were, you know what I mean? Right, right. And there was a lot of other people there that had AR-15s, too. It wasn't just a 17-year-old. But those other people didn't kill anybody, okay? Sure, yeah. All right, well, let's go really to some crazy. music here. Yeah, but, sorry. I mean, it's just, it's... I know, it's frustrating, it's annoying, it's, it's disgusting, it's... Yeah. Uh, just just roll out your adjectives, you know? Um. Right. <laughs> I, I mean... Uh, all right. Yeah, so I we'll, know. Okay, well, yeah, let's listen to some tunes and talk about something else when we come back. Yeah, yeah, we got stuff. <laughs> Howdy, Hanko! All right. All right. <laughs> righty. Enjoy, everyone. We'll be back. Are you going to go my way? We love you, Joe. Thank you for all the incredible music. Yeah, we love you, Joe. 
<laughs> That's the interrupters uh, covering Joe Strummer's Get Down Moses. That was his uh, birthday, I think. Uh, would have been his birthday anyway. Um, he, he, he's gone now. But uh, Joe Strummer from The Clash, if you don't know Joe Strummer. Uh, get down, Moses! Yeah, the interrupters. Amy Allen, boy, is she, she's still just amazing. Uh, anyway, before that, a Moose Girl request there. Josh Turner in Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, you know that's a Johnny Cash tune, right? And we kicked it off there with Leo Maraccioli and Leo Maraccioli uh, doing uh, Lenny Kravitz. Are you going to go my way? <laughs> Oh yeah. boy! Yeah, I dig, I dig that, I dig that cover there, uh, Joe Strummer cover, man. Uh, that's some great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Get Good down, tune. Moses. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. He did fuck up because in Wisconsin it's illegal to have a AR-15 under yep. 18. Also, he did cross state lines, but the um, extradition trial or what hearing is set for September 25th so he can find a lawyer. Okay, you're talking you about... You better find a damn good one. You're, you're, you're so talk, I'm saying... You're talking about chat. Man, you're talking about chat stuff here? No, I'm talking this Kyle kid. Oh, okay. Uh, this just, shooter. You, you started into a thing there. And I was like, what? Sorry. No, but what I'm saying... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, George Soros is funding BLM, all right? Of course. And... It's a democratic movement, people. It's not a Republican one. Well, it's a socialist so, movement. Um, yeah. And, of course, the Democrats closely associate with that. Yes. Yes. So, you guys, well, how do you explain the looting and the burning, okay? And how the fuck can you call that a peaceful protest? <laughs> All right. Well, you saw you saw the video, the pictures this week. There's a CNN guy standing in front of this huge burning building, saying mostly fiery, but mostly peaceful protesters. I'm like, what? <laughs> mostly. How can yeah, they be mostly okay. peaceful if they're lighting buildings on fire? That's not peaceful in any way. In uh, Minneapolis and in other cities across this country, big cities. <laughs> hey, JJ. Pallets of bricks were showing up conveniently in these places where these riots were going to happen, okay? Yeah. All right? That was a real thing. That really happened. All right? Because mm. we're like, what is that pallet of bricks doing there? Yeah, where'd that come from? And they're like, oh, it's for a building project. And it was bullshit. Right. Yeah, there, I was, mean, no, there was no construction guys, anywhere around. It was just pallets of bricks stacked all around the city in... in Places yeah. convenient to throw them through windows. Why am I here in the background, Grim? Is that me or you? It's not me. Shit. What I you hear something I, I, in the background here. Yeah, what? I hear something in the background. I don't know where it's coming from. Oh, it's from Twitter. Oh. Okay, I had, it was, you know how I didn't have it scrolled up or refreshed or whatever, and there was like a video playing, you know. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I hate that when they automatically start like that. Uh, but, yeah. no, seriously, legal is bullshit, all right? I mean, right. yeah, it's great that weed's legal in Illinois, Michigan, all these places, but still, it's legalized instead of just freed, you know. Right, deregulate, I mean, deregulate. Deregulate, that's what you want. You don't want legal shit. That's government involvement there. Exactly. And guess what? People have been smoking weed forever, even though it's supposedly illegal, and they've been growing weed forever, even though it's illegal, quote-unquote. Right. And no, they're not going to stop growing it themselves. They're not going to just go, oh, weed's legal now, so now I'm just going to buy it from a head shop. They're going to be like, fuck no, I'm going to grow a lot more plants, dude. Yeah. I'm going to grow it for myself. Fuck this regulation shit. Absolutely. You know, it's a plant, people, and yep. it's medicine for a lot of people, and it helps a lot of people with a lot of different ailments. Sure. Okay? Sure. So. And who cares? It's, more, it's the legalization. Of, and if that's the reason you're not smoking weed, because it's illegal, I feel really bad for you. Right, right. I really do. <laughs> I feel bad for you if you're smoke, not smoking it because it's illegal. Oh, no. Yeah. 
And yeah. anyway, I don't I don't care if it's great for medical or not. I don't care, you know, people, right. people want to do heroin and crack. That's I, I don't care about yep, that either. If you want to fucking be a crackhead, go for it, dude. I, that's, it's, it's it's your, not, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, go for it. Right. Right. You know, hey, well, what's, that, what's that thing? My body, my choice. Yep. Uh, well, that only doesn't that only that doesn't apply unless it's specifically politically targeted. Approved. Polit- politically targeted for certain things. I mean, I'm sorry, but how many people in the last 20 years have died due to opioid overdose? Okay, so don't come in here and sit, come in here and sit there and go, well, big pharma meds and they and the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many opioid deaths there are? The, uh, this controlled substance by the government and the FDA or whoever the fuck. You know how many people they have killed? Uh, I mean, you guys are in, misinformed, dude. You guys watch way too. I mean, some of you, not all of you. Watch way too much Fox or CNN or mainstream media, and that's where you get your information. You don't do your own research. You just fucking take what the fucking head says on that TV channel that you're watching as truth. And right. then you don't think for yourself at all. You're letting mainstream media control your mind. Well, here's the thing is all this stuff that's going on now, uh, whether it's... Uh, oh, wait, the... I can hear myself echoing or something, Grim. Oh, I don't know. Are you on... Are you okay, on... I got it. It uh, was it was like just a little bit turned up, and it wasn't totally muted on the player. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's weird. Okay, so now that's solved. Okay. All right, so anyway, all all these uh, all this crap that's going on now, uh, whether mm-hmm. it's the corona nonsense or these, these riots in the streets or... Uh, all, all this different, mm-hmm. all, all this different bad stuff going on out there. Mm-hmm. It's 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 hiding. It's hiding the big facts, the big thing, which is yeah. the absolute destruction of the economy. Um, and and that that's where this is. That's where that's where yes, this is headed. Yes, that's what's happening. And uh, I have a nice post here to to share okay. with you. Uh, all right. Uh, it's on activist post, but it's from Michael Snyder. Um, okay. It's uh, 17 facts that prove the United States economy is a complete and total disaster zone at this point, which, you know, it's been that way for a long time. Uh, anyway, not to get into all of his his uh, his, his content, but just into the, to his bullet points here. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's what I'm going to share with you. Uh, all right. So, number one, according to the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce, more than half of all the storefronts in the entire city of San Francisco are no longer in business. No right. longer in business. They're not coming back. There's not going to be a recovery. Nope. There'll be no nope. recovery for them. Half of all the storefronts in San Francisco. It's a big mm-hmm. city. That's a lot of storefronts, a lot of people that yeah, owned and ran those businesses, a lot of people that were employed at those businesses, a lot of people that supplied those businesses. Gone. Finished. Done. Uh, just a right. few, uh, I'm not sure when this few hours ago was from, but just a few hours ago, New York City reported that it had an unemployment rate of almost 20% during the month of, month of July. 20% in, wow. in New York, in a huge, like, 8 million people city. Um, <laughs> number three, speaking of New York, 83% of all restaurants in the city were unable to pay their full rent last month. Right. So who's that affecting? Well, not just those that can't pay, but all, all of the people that were uh, trying to get that money because they have mortgages on those buildings, uh, right. and they can't pay the mortgages. So wh- where's that going to go? All right, number four. In 2020, the state of Louisiana has lost twice as many jobs as it did after Katrina. Uh, by the way, many are concerned that Laura, which we know didn't happen to be that too big of a thing, but... Right, uh, they was, made a bigger deal out of it than yeah. it was going to be. So they, they thought it could be as like, as big as Katrina, but it wasn't. So right, anyway. it wasn't. Uh, in the state of South Carolina, an eye-popping 52% of all renters are at risk of conve- uh, eviction. The entire mm-hmm. state of South Carolina, 52% Wow, of, that's uh, over half of, of, of renters. There. Of, of the renters. Now, I don't know what the percentage of renters oh, to renters. owners. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I don't know what the percentage of renters to owners is, but it's a lot. Right. There's, yeah. It's still a lot. Uh, number six, Americans now owe more than $21 billion in unpaid rent. 
Wow. And that's and not, unpaid utilities too. I'm sure the numbers close too. Yeah. There. The thing is, you know, they they put like a moratorium on. Okay, you can't evict anybody for X right, amount of time. Right. Of course, that moratorium didn't say you don't owe this rent. It's just that you don't have to pay it until the moratorium's they up. They owned it, right. right? But at the end of that well, deal, you're going to be in total debt. Yeah, these people that are out of work out of, uh, and yep. uh, got no way to, to. They couldn't keep up with their normal monthly rent in the first place. Now, right. now we're going to have months and months of that rent. Um, so over twenty seven, right. overall twenty seven percent of all Americans did not make their rent or mortgage payments last month. Twenty-seven percent. Over over a quarter of all Americans did not make their rent or mortgage payments. What do you think is going to happen there? Exactly. Uh, according to the Mortgage Brokers Association, the delinquency rate on residential mortgages increased by 386 basis points last quarter. That was the most rapid rise that has ever been seen by a huge margin. Uh, all right. Number nine, U.S. bankruptcies are already at their highest level in 10 years, and they are expected to surge dramatically as we approach the end of this calendar year. Yes, dramatically, more than uh, unimaginable amount. You're, you guys are, this is just, and we're going into winter now. Oh, yeah, so you've got to evict all these people in winter? Uh, and there's there's food shortages and... It's pretty bleak, you guys. I mean... Right. Uh, number 10. For companies with more than $1 billion in assets, it is being projected that there will be a record number of bankruptcies in 2020. Those are not small companies. A billion dollars in assets. More... <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Number 11. World trade plunged to the lowest levels on record during the month of June. That's yeah. Overall, the entire Everything globe... Everything shut down. The entire globe, lowest levels on record. It was uh, shut down. Everything. Yep. All these countries, every, China was shut down. Everyone was shut down. Yep. Well, China's actually doing all right because... Now they are. Well, at that time, they weren't. Yeah. Well, no, nobody's buying anything from them, but... Uh, right. Yeah, anyway. Number 12, the percentage of hotel mortgages are that are 30 or more days delinquent soared by 23.4% last month. Uh, mm -hmm. American Airlines just announced they will be eliminating 19,000 jobs next month. Uh, 30, wow. 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. So American Airlines pretty much kind of on the. They were well, on, all the airlines are fucked up. Yeah, they're they're. they're no one's traveling. No one's going anywhere. There's all, so many restrictions. All, you you can't go anywhere. They're all teetering on the brink, and they're all begging for yeah. gover government bailouts. Say goodbye to U.S. to airlines, basically. Right. Come uh, on. <laughs> 31% of United States workers were brought back to work after being laid off during the early stages of the pandemic, have been laid off a second time, and another 26% have mm -hmm. been told that layoffs are coming soon yep. to a job near them. Yep. Uh, according to one recent survey, about half of all U.S. workers that have been laid off during this pandemic believe that their job losses are permanent. Yeah, half, half. Of everybody yep. thinks that their their jobs are totally gone. Yeah. Uh, number sixteen. The IRS is projecting that it will receive thirty seven million fewer W two forms for this year than I originally anticipated. Oh yeah. I'd, I'd 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 pump that number up a bit. Thirty seven yeah. million, maybe fifty, sixty million. Right. Uh, a little less. Over the last twenty two weeks, more than fifty seven million Americans have filed new claims for unemployment. In all of U.S. history, we have never seen anything that is even worth comparing to this. Nothing, not even close. Many of the many of the numbers in that list are so catastrophic that it's difficult to believe that they are actually true. What we experienced in 2008 and 2009 was a deep recession, but what right. we are experiencing now oh is God, it's so beyond. so much worse. Oh, at, God, it's so much worse than you know. At this, at this point, even the collapse of mainstream media is admitting that this new downturn will be with us for a long time. Yeah, uh, the, the re, the, this is just the beginning. Anyway, there's a lot more information in this article that you can look at, but let me tell you, the corona, 
Who cares? Uh, all these riots in the streets, they, they're they not going to matter. This is the real stuff right there, yep. folks. This is the stuff that's going to hit everybody. I don't care what economic bracket yep. you think you're in. Exactly. Uh, I don't care how safe you feel with your money right. in the bank. Yep. Uh, it, it's it's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. That's what I said. Get some medals, you guys. Like, instead of buying something frivolous or something, um... Get some gold and silver. Like, even though it might not be the best time to buy it right now because you you waited too long. And the prices basically. are up. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you'd be best off investing in some kind, even a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can just be a little. I mean, some of the gold that I bought, the thing is so, you almost have to look at it with a microscope, okay? Yeah. But at least I have it, and it will never lose its value, okay? Yeah. Don't you think, Grim? Isn't oh, that? yeah. No, no. no. I mean, it, it may go down in price versus whatever is the reserve currency in mm -hmm. days to come because I don't know how much longer the United States dollar, the Federal Reserve Federal Reserve dollar, can hang on to the global reserve status that it's enjoyed since uh, the 50s, I think. Yeah, um, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the way that the uh, they're pumping out all these fake trillions – yeah, that that has an effect, and I'm not it's talking about on you, although it, although it does on you, it mm -hmm. has an effect on on the people that are uh, buying up the, the U.S. bonds, supplying credit uh, for the right. United States to continually buy and buy and buy. Um, and was that the IMF? Well, they're 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 a part of it, but the overall global. So who is it? Well, it's a lot of people that that buy U.S. bonds. China buys a lot of U.S. bonds. China, I was going to say China. A, lo a lot yeah. of foreign countries and entities uh, buy U.S. bonds as a as you know basically a, basically a safe well as a, basically a safe bet. Yeah, you buy it now, okay. and at some point, depending on the bonds you buy, you're going to get paid back plus mm -hmm. interest at a at a point in the future. But if mm -hmm. you start devaluing your currency mm -hmm. faster, uh, fa faster uh, than the uh, amount of interest uh, is, is being accrued, then, then right. you're you're buying a, a negative it's in instrument. It would be worthless, right? Well, it, it, I mean, are you going to buy something with a promise of a, a maybe a five percent guarantee return in five years? And you look yeah. at you look at what's going on with with whatever it is that you're buying. Uh, that 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 thing on, and it's dropping in value at at twelve percent a year, instead and said you're and you're promised five percent in five years, so um, <laughs> right, w w does that sound like a good investment to you? No, no, no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, DJ, you can still buy gold and silver. You can buy single bullion. Yeah, you, you can, can buy you, you can one buy. ounce rounds of silver. You can buy five ounce bars. You can buy one ounce gold. I mean, it's it go to just look it up. You'll find site. I mean, we can recommend some sites to you, but um, I use Apmex, um, A P M E X. Yeah. But you can still buy gold and silver. Oh right sure, now. sure, sure. Yeah, don't think that they own it all because they don't yet. Not yet. yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Physical no. gold. Physical. You know, physical you, gold. You don't want no freaking. Silver. You don't want no paper gold. No, you don't want no paper shit. That no. Ask you ask Wood ask, ask Woodman about the paper gold he bought a bunch yeah. of some some years ago or paper silver I think he actually got. Uh huh. Silver uh, certificates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just through just through an exchange, you know. No, uh, let's, I mean, I'm just gonna link you a site here quick, JJ. Let me just um. Look up. I mean, and don't you don't have to use this one because there's other ones out there that might have better pricing. Yeah. Um, but just to get you started to see what's available, okay? But I think there's better sites out oh, there. Oh sure. And Rome's for one. He knows a lot of good sites where he's bought and bullion from before. Right. Um, let me just let me just pick up out oh, one like buy. If you just type buy silver or gold bullion in a chat in a search, you'll find. Yeah, uh, just be careful. Several sites. Just, just be yeah, careful. Just There's be a lot, careful, of, right. a lot make, of scammers make sure out secure there. And make sure they're, you know, reputable. And if you're not sure, the one that I found that I've learned about was this one. 
Uh, yeah. But I don't, you you know you, there's several sites you can compare pricing. I yeah, I, I used to buy a ton of silver from a a, a mint called Northwest Territorial Mint, but mm-hmm. they they have since gone under. Uh, they had mm-hmm. some some uh, extenuating issues, but it didn't have anything to do with their metals. It had right. uh, it had to do with right. their management as usual. Oh, okay. The corruption yeah. in the management, but uh, I used to buy a ton of silver from them, and uh, right. So a- anyway. It's um, worth it though because if you have that, it's just kind of like a security blanket—not really a blanket, but just knowledge that this this metal is not going to lose value. Really, I mean, right? It's going to fluctuate, but you may but look always at, be worth. Oh, sorry, Grant. Yeah, I'm just saying you may look at other things besides metals too, uh, right? Whether, whether that be uh, guns or ammo or tools, right. the seeds. Uh, there, there's all kinds of different things that people are going to need if everything collapses to where right. I expect it to. Of course, and I, we, I expect it to, too. And that's why I'm kind of planning ahead a little bit because I'm like, you know, I'm going to need this. I, you know, instead of buying some stupid, frivolous thing like a boat, some big item, you know, um, I'm just going to buy something smart. because, And right now, the way shit is, I decided I was going to buy some bullion. And, and I actually bought gold for the first time. Like, I never bought gold bullion before. And like I said, it was minuscule. Right. You know, it's it's like, I don't even know what the weight is, 0. 0.5 or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, it just made me feel a little bit better. You know, I was so excited when it got here. You know what I mean? And also, also just... Uh... I, I don't I don't know you personally, so I can't say what you know. But brush right. up uh, brush up on your mechanical skills. Um, yes. If you used to be really good at repairing certain Cars things, or sponges. look uh, look at look at what's happened to them now, and and try and understand what what it may take if you, if you're not up to date right. on your skills right. on on various repair things. But mechanical yep. skills will be a huge boon to whoever has those yes. skills because. Shit's gonna break down, and people are gonna need yep. it fixed. And, and there's not gonna be shops and shit open. Right. So everything's so gonna be on. You know. If you have everyone, those cap- if you have yep. those capabilities, you're, you'll be doing all right. And um, also, what I was gonna say, well, for me, I bought two of everything because I got two kids. So to me, it was like an investment and to help them out too. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. when I'm gone, you guys will have this. Thing. You know what I mean? If, right. Unless I have to use it. Right, 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 exactly. Got, you know what I mean? Exactly. But at least it's like kind of, you know, it's something valuable, truly valuable that I can give to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that uh, was my, because I can't like go, well, you get the gold piece, but you don't. It's like, no, I have to buy the two of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that way since I, before they were born. I knew I had to buy two of everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twins, you know. But um, just do your price. If you have any questions, there's a lot of knowledgeable people in the chat room regarding bullion. Um, Grimner's good. Rome's is good. Um, I know a little bit. I'm not an expert. I'm not as good as Grimner, but um, I've been watching this for a while now, this metals thing. Sure. And I remember I bought a bunch of bullion like in 08 or 09, but then I, or, or before that, and then I had to trade it all in because... That's when that one depression hit. Yeah. Back in '08, and I had to sell a bunch back or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm trying to get get some now again. Sure. But um, even if you can only buy it two times a year or once a year or something, you know what I mean, or just one piece at a time, it, it, it's still a good value, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know that. Um, just just remember, Johnny Cash built a whole car one piece at a time. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, I, it is time to be prepping right now with the the state of the world. Right, I, mean, I think Grim, since we first started doing this show, this is the worst. We're at the worst period. Like. I don't know why I feel that. You know what I mean? I feel like because we we did the show in '08 and '09 when there was like major unemployment and all that shit. You know. Yeah. But now I think this year is like off the charts. I mean, this yeah. whole with the pandemic and all the everything. 
Mm -hmm. This is where we're at. <laughs> sure. I think it's we're at like a breaking point just about now. Yeah, yeah. yeah what do you see? Do you, I mean, people are saying, oh, there's going to be a civil war. I, I, no, I, I already told you what I think. There's going to be a, a, the, fall, the, a false... The economy collapsing. Well, that, but uh, prior to that, there's going to be a false flag event. Right, uh, you already said that. Yeah, I told so. I told someone that, too, that you would have said that. Mm -hmm. And it was in the chat today because there's some shit going on in Syria. Oh, yeah. There's some shit going on in China and the South China Sea. Right. And Russia's involved. And you, it could, it's a tin, it's like a, uh, what do they call that? Kinder keg or whatever. It, it feels tinderbox. like it's gonna, something's about ready to pop off. You know what I mean? A tinderbox. Tinderbox. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Anyway, yeah, like I, I, I think yeah. it's the, they're going to pull a false flag, blame it on Iran, and then use mm -hmm. Iran to start a war. Uh, and right. that, that'll be the, that'll be to pump up the Trump. Um, <laughs> because right. because once because yeah, he's it's election year. Right. Uh, but of course, it, that that is. A side factor from the total economy collapse, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's this. I, you can't shut down the freaking world for six, eight months, and 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 still they're not done. I mean, they're gonna keep this thing right. going uh, for a while, uh, so you can't you can't do it and and expect people to be able to survive. Ex expect the world to survive. Uh, I expect, you know, I mean, you, right. as that article I talked to, they closed down all of these companies. They're, they're never coming back. They're gone. They're finished. So, uh, they're, right. they'll, they'll, they're gone. I mean, there'll be some we've seen you know, this happening and unfolding though through the years. We have, we've seen oh yeah, it. Oh yeah. But there'll be consolidation of course, and everything right. will be under the umbrella of a, the umbrella corporation. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you probably don't get that reference, the umbrella corporation, but uh, that's all right. Kind of. <laughs> well, it's an insurance term. <laughs> I know no, that. No. <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I saw it, but that's, and, it's been years since I've seen that. Well, yeah, but yeah, mm -hmm. if you played the game, you understand they, they released a pandemic the disease globally, mm -hmm. uh, and, right, and, and there was this, you know, uh, the Umbrella Corporation, and uh, used mm -hmm. it for all kinds of evil things. Yeah, so, I remember. Yeah. So, so all, all, all of these little companies, your mom and pop shops, uh, they'll all be gone, and maybe some yep. new ones will open up if, if, right. if things ever stabilize and get to a level. Well, where, it'll where, be like you said; it'll be out of people's homes, like small engine repair or car repair. Well, or maybe I mean you. Uh, yep. uh, you know, maybe, maybe it, it depends on what happens after the collapse. Yeah, um, exactly. Because it's, it's possible that there'll be enough. Uh, I mean, you know, people still have to do things. They still have to. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and whatever form that takes, because mm -hmm. it's not going to be as it was. Pre no, it is not. It's not going to be. Will that not way. be. They say, "Oh, when we get back, don't believe that we get back to normal crap." Right. Do not. Do not. Because everyone's throwing all these catchwords. The mainstream media, new, new normal, and blah blah blah. We're all in this together. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and, and of course, the globalist controllers are going to push their weight around. Right. And and, and do as much as they can to prevent you yeah. know mom and pops, but. You know, and also, are... I was just going to say, tonight, I walked into the store with no fucking man. I'm like, fuck you. Not Because <laughs> the employees there aren't even wearing them, dude. Right. Nobody wants that it's shit. It's like, fuck you. I'm and, not wearing a goddamn mask anymore. Fuck and, off. And when we come back from this music set okay. that I'm about to play, I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about that very topic. All right. Let's do that. And we will be back. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, in this crazy fucking motherfucking shit that's going on. Yep. <laughs> All righty. This is a band you may have heard of before. They're a new band, brand new band. It's, they're called The Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's some bad stuff right there, let me tell you. That's some good rock and roll. Uh, that was a band called uh, Doc Holliday. So, a song was called Last Ride. There's a lot of great movie clips there in that. So, Doc Holiday, Last Ride. Uh, before that, we had Billy Motherfucking Strings 
And Lindsay Lou covering Led Zeppelin's uh, Good Times, uh, Bad Times. And we kicked it off there with the Rolling Stones. A song some of you may not be familiar with. It's called Jivin' Sister Fanny. Yep. So uh, good good rock and roll there. And uh, yeah, there Billy. There you go. Billy tearing it up. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. He can shred, dude. He can play electric guitar. He can play acoustic guitar. He used to be in a metal and rock band before he switched to bluegrass. But he grew up learning on bluegrass. Oh, his daddy taught him bluegrass. You know, it, it always it always does my heart good when I when I see uh, somebody play, playing the uh, uh, the uh, Gibson SG. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. No kidding, right? Yeah, I used to have and one. And Billy, he's just talented, dude. He can just play whatever guitar you give him. I mean, sure, sure. You know, he's a musician. That's right. what I do. Right. <laughs> so, um, the mask thing, what do you got for me? All right, just give me one second. I'll for get, us, I'll, I'll, not I'll, just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get right to it. Just hang on. All righty, then. Here. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, Easy Rider, you guys. If you have not seen that movie ever, watch that fucking movie. Yeah. You got Peter Fonda, Dennis Hopper, Jack Nicholson. It's a classic. I highly recommend... Watch it at least one time in your lifetime. Okay. Yep. Here we go. All right. Great movie. Now, 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 this story is posted on a website called AIER dot org, the American familiar. Yep. American Institute for Economic Research. Yep. What the hell is this? Well, Um, I don't like them. I'm just saying I'm aware of them. I'm not saying I like them. I'm just saying I'm aware of them. All right. Okay. Lockdowns and mask mandates do not lead to reduced COVID transmission rates or deaths. This is posted by uh, Stephen C. Miller on August 26th, Mm -hmm. so just a couple of days ago. Now, I tweeted tweeted this this article out to Mm -hmm. the uh, fascist governor of New Mexico (laughs) and said, read this. Right. Oh, you did tweet it out to her Twitter page? Well, to her Twitter account. I don't oh, know. nice, good. And okay. I said, your man, your 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 masks and social distancing and lockdowns uh-huh. are not helping enough right. already. Mm-hmm. So here it is: a new National Bureau of Economic and Research (NBER) working paper by Andrew Atkinson, Karen Kapoki, and mm-hmm. Tao Zha, focused on countries and the United uh-huh. States with more than a thousand COVID deaths as of late July. In all, the study included 25 U.S. states and 23 countries. Based on their analysis, the author, authors present four stylized facts about COVID-19, which are, mm-hmm. once a region reaches 25 total COVID deaths within a month, the growth rate and deaths per day fall to approximately zero. In other yeah. words, no matter the country or state or the policies, Deaths per day stop increasing within 20 to 30 days of passing the threshold of 25 deaths. Yeah. Once that happens, deaths per day begin to fall, and the mm-hmm. trend line remains flat. The, yeah. vari- the variability in death trends across regions has fallen sharply since the beginning of the epidemic and remains low. All studies, all states studied, all countries mm-hmm. studied have become more similar in their trends and have remained so. Uh, observations, right. observations one through three, those first ones, mm-hmm. suggest that the effective reproduction number, R, has hovered around one worldwide uh, after the first 30 days of the epidemic. The paper's conclusion is that data trends observed above likely indicate that non-pharmaceutical intervention, MPIs, uh, such as lockdowns, enclosures, travel restrictions, stay-at-home orders, event bans, quarantines, curfews, and mask mandates do not seem to affect virus transmission rates right. over, overall. Uh, why? Because those policies have varied in their timing and implementation across countries and states. All right. Uh, uh, but the trends and outcomes do not. So... They are, right. Everybody's got their different little policies and mandates yep. and crap like that, and it's mm-hmm. not changing the the uh, effective rate right. of, of what's going on. Um, right. 
And, I'll, I mean, okay, so what I've seen, oh, were you done with the article? Graham? No, no, but go ahead. What I've seen out there is people take down their masks to speak to people. Right. And so you're not, you're wearing the mask, but then you're speaking to somebody and you're taking the mask down so they can hear you better. It, it, you're not doing it effectively if you're doing that. Right. And I just see so many people, like, Using them incorrectly, ineffectively, or not at all. And like, okay, so I guess for the last three weeks, when the, when the when the governor mandated it, right? Right. For a lot of places, like Quick Trip did it, Walmart did it, and, and this was like a month ago or something. I'm too, I don't know how long ago. You lose okay. track of time on this shit. But anyway, they were like totally enforcing it. And like a week after the Walmart mandated it, they came out with a statement. We talked about it on Freaker saying. We're not going to turn you away. You're not weird. And then after that week, after that story, there was no one outside of Walmart saying, how come you don't have a mask on? Or you need a mask? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so they realized that they're losing fucking money up the ass if they enforce this mask thing. And now I go to the convenience store. The employees, they aren't wearing them anymore. They're like, fuck this. We're working. It's fucking hot as fuck. I'm working. You want me to wear a fucking mask? Fuck off. <laughs> you know, come on. And so I walk in the store the other day. I for- totally forgot to put my that loose piece of cloth on my face. I'm like, fuck it. You know what I mean? They still waited on me. They didn't fucking ma- you know, tell me to leave. So right. people are sick of it. You can only force shit on people for so long before they're like, fuck this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, this know, ain't we're... freedom. Fuck you. I'm, it's my body. If I want to expose myself to whatever fucking scary germ I'm supposed to be afraid of, that's my choice. Fuck you. Making hey. me wear some goddamn thing on my fucking face. Fuck uh, off. See you, JJ. Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, 170 days into the 14 days. Yes. Right. So. Come on. Enough is enough. This is bullshit. Right, right. So, anyway, the fact that they don't work should be enough. Uh, right. Anyway, uh, apparently... It should be, but... Going on here, uh, this study runs counter to previous studies claiming that NPIs were effective in reducing transmission rates during early stages of the epidemic. The authors explain, uh, given the observation that transmission rates for COVID-19 fell virtually everywhere in the world during the early pandemic period, we are yeah. concerned that these studies may substantially overstate the role of government-mandated NPIs in reducing uh, disease transmission due to omitted variable bias. Uh, one of the key candidates uh, for the one of the key candidates for the key omitted variable, i.e., the true cause of the decline in transmission rates after the first months of an epidemic, is that human interaction does not conform to simple epidemiological models. Uh, In the real world, human social networks overlap in such a way that a virus can spread rapidly for a short period of time as some people contact more networks than others, but reaches natural dead ends and roundabouts where potential new hosts in a new social network have already been exposed through other networks. The effect can resemble what some think of as herd immunity, but at relatively low infection rates. Relatively low. The authors reason that even NPIs were effective early on. They do not appear to be any more. Moreover, given the observation that disease transmission rates have remained low with relatively low dispersion across locations worldwide for the past several months as NPIs have been lifted, we are concerned that the estimates of the effectiveness of the NPIs in reducing the disease transmission from the earlier period may not be relevant for forecasting the impact of the relaxation of those NPIs in the current period due to the somewhat unobserved switch in regime. Uh, so the, the study has got a lot of statistical support. Uh, and, and uh, you know, of course, they don't want you to know about this kind of stuff because they want to keep that control over you. Uh, right. They, they, want, they want to make sure that you are following their, whatever their word is, uh, based yep. upon bad science, not science right. at all. Uh, right. It, it's, it, it's, it's absolute insanity. The, the, to keep right. this crap going on, these lockdowns, it's and these masks. Ridic- I feel so bad for people 
that have to work like at a bank. And they wear this fucking neoprene mask all day long. Right. You, you don't realize what that's doing to your health. You don't know what the long-term effects will be. You could be damaging your lungs or damaging something. And you're doing it for eight hours a day. Right. I just, I, you know, that's why these employees at the going convenience stores is privately owned, okay? Sure. It's not a quick trip. It's, it's privately owned. And they're not wearing, they're not making their employees wear them. Of course not. It's like they're working hard. It's hot out. It was 90 degrees. It was hot as hell the last three days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they got air conditioning, but they're still working. They're moving around, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't give a fuck if they're not wearing a mask. I don't blame. I wouldn't want to for eight hours. I prefer they don't wear a mask. But right, that's me. Uh, me too. It's like breathe freely, motherfuckers. Can't you guys understand? Get that? Don't you get that? Like seriously, when I'm wearing, when I have worn it at certain stores, right? I my throat starts to hurt. I start to get get like a scratchy throat. Sure. It's because I'm rebreathing the shit that I expelled, and you're not supposed to do that. Right. You know, you're not supposed, when I don't wear a mask, I don't get that. Yeah. Okay, so that's enough to tell me, fuck this shit. Sure. Fuck this piece of cloth. It's, it's just a fucking symbol. It's not even really helping you. Because, like I said, people wear them under their nose. They take them down to talk. You know what I mean? Unless I they're going to permanently <laughs> attach these other fucking masks to people, it's not going to work. Okay. Right, and they're not going to work anyway. You're going to attach a permanent mask to my face, cunt. Well, even even if they were permanently attached, they don't work. Right. They don't right. work. <laughs> no, they don't. Oh, God. All right, so I have another one here. Oh. Um, and whatever, Democrat, didn't matter. But <laughs> it, according to this here, the article, it's on, it's on zerohedge.com. Uh, okay. Five COVID-19 charts that Democrats definitely don't want you to see. Oh, I, I, yeah, I saw you post this okay. this week. Yeah. So uh, amid his confirmation that he he would just shut down the nation if scientists told him to, uh, Joe Biden explained just what Trump admin had got wrong and how to fix it. In order to keep the country running and moving and the economy growing and people employed, mm -hmm. you have to fix the virus. Uh, which of course they can't Fix do. Fix the virus. Which, is, which of course they can't do, and you have to you have to <laughs> deal with it. Uh, well, the good news is, as as the uh, following five charts from John Merline's issues and insights blog show, the U.S. is beating the virus. The virus is basically dead and beaten at this point. Uh, you, of course, you're not going to hear that on your no your no, C no. your CNNs and NBCs and all that crap. No, uh, nope. If the Democratic National Convention made anything clear, it is that the Democrats are entirely invested in making the coronavirus pandemic look worse than it is in the United States. Almost every, right. every speaker there uh, decried the response of the Trumpster for the scale of the disease in the country. In his acceptance speech, Joe Biden uh, said, uh, just judge the president on the facts. Five million Americans infected by COVID-19, more than 170,000 have died. By far the worst performance of any nation on Earth, which is total nonsense, by the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but, uh, yeah, uh, percentage-wise and everything else. But, yeah, it's total uh, nonsense. And he said, he said, we lead the world in confirmed cases. We lead the world in deaths. That was Biden's words. Uh, fact checkers somehow missed, mm -hmm. missed. Biden's flagrant abuse of statistics. Uh, NPR's fact check of Biden's speech said uh, only that, if anything, Biden undercounted the number of COVID-19 deaths. NPR, right. NPR, what do you expect? Uh, but the number, right. the number of infections and deaths is meaningless out of context. What matters is how many have died per capita, how many who've been infected have succumbed to the disease, and where the trends are right now. When you mm -hmm. do that, the picture is far less bleak. Right. The, the United States is far from the worst in the world. In terms of death rate per million population, 
Uh, the United States ranks 10th for per capita deaths worldwide, and notably better than the UK with its socialist health care health care scheme, health care scheme, health care scheme, and Sweden, which adopted a much more laissez-faire, how do we say that, uh, laissez-faire approach to the pandemic in the United States. And they have a chart here, deaths per million, and they show the top 10, and the United States is at the very bottom. I'm not sure where San Marino is. I think it's in Italy or Greece. California. No, 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 it's a country. Oh, Okay. I, I think it's <laughs> over there by Italy or Greece in that area. Oh, okay. So it's San Marino, Belgium, Peru, Andorra, uh, Spain, UK, Italy, Sweden, Chile, uh, Brazil, and then the U.S. Uh, and, and showing uh, San Marino at 1,200 deaths per million and the U.S. at under 600. Okay? On the confirmed right. cases per million, the United States ranks ninth, but... Uh, this is part, uh, in part due to the extensive testing done here. In fact, despite what Biden and company will have you believe, we are in the top of the pack when it comes to COVID-19 tests per capita, 19th out of 215 nations. So it shows the tests per millions, Andorra, and Faroe Islands, Monaco, all the way at the top there uh, doing their, their tests, but they don't have that many people, so it's easier to do. And the United States way down the list there, uh, but uh, still doing fine. All right. So, um, so this note also only that only four of the other organizations for economic cooperation and development nations do better than the U.S. on tests per capita. When it comes to uh, case fatality rate, the share of confirmed cases uh, who have died, there is no comparison. And the U.S. they've got this long, long list of countries. And the U.S. is at the very bottom of it. Yemen is at number one. And, well, a lot of those Yemen deaths are due to U.S. involvement in what's going on over there. But it's Yemen, Italy, France, U.K., Belgium, Hungary. Da -da 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 -da, on and on and on. Way, way down this big list. Uh, the U.S. at 3%. And uh, the Yemen's at 28% or so. Um, so almost nothing. Um, so, so it's wise, as usual. Yeah, yeah. So not only does the United States outperform most countries as well as the world overall, as case fatality rates in the U.S. have been uh, declining steadily. They got like a spaghetti chart here to show you that. Um, you have to look at these charts yourselves, but whatever. I'll give you the link in a minute. Um, finally, there's the chart Democrats really don't want you to see. The number of COVID-19 cases peaked a month ago and has been trending down ever since. Now, here in New Mexico, they have what they call uh, gating criteria, uh, that you can only have X amount of new cases per day or week or whatever. Uh, and and uh, for like two weeks in a row, uh, the, the numbers were below whatever this gating criteria was. And that was the numbers from the state health department. And then once the media outlets here uh, got a hold of that, the the, the radio people uh, mm -hmm. got a hold of that and started uh, saying, hey, look, we're well below our gaming criteria. That means it's time to start opening shit up because that was her, her, right. non, her nonsense. Uh, yeah. the, the, the very next day, oh, we found a whole bunch of cases we didn't know about. Well, just like they do with the votes, you know, if the wrong person wins. Oh, look at all these votes right. we found over here. Yeah. So, yeah. so now for the last four days, uh, the, 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 it's been above the great gating number because suddenly, uh, now, uh, that, that was, that it was below the gating thing that stuff could start opening. Nope. We can't have that. So anyway, they got a chart here, uh, showing the, the significant drop in cases over the last month here. So. <laughs> so not only is the epidemic becoming less deadly, but its spread has slowed. Democrats do not want you to know any of this, and neither does the Trump-hating press. Democrats can't let you know if they hope to reclaim the White House and take control of Congress based on fear and panic. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so fuck the Dems. And believe in mainstream media, Biden oh, and the height. I tell you. Um, I don't know. But, but I don't know why people can't think for themselves. Why do they 
I don't know. I don't know why they hang on to these old ideals. I, I don't either. I don't know why they buy into this. I it's mean, all, it's all said, crazy. You see it all the time, Grim. I know, but... The banksters are in control. Right. You say that all the time. People I do. You don't believe that, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> um, I don't know how you cannot believe that and how you cannot believe that you're being manipulated. Because the TV's not telling them so, so it can't be right. Right. If it ain't on the TV, it ain't real. <laughs> right. But let me, it's not from mainstream media. But, but let me send you a message here. Okay. For all you folks out there that uh, mm -hmm. are worried that you might die from this invisible monster. Well, not, not me sending you a message. It's Jim Morrison. <laughs> because don't be so concerned. Right. It ain't going to help. All right, that was nice there. Uh, Musco request, Cab Calloway, and Reefer Man. Have you ever met that funny Reefer Man? And a funny Reefer Man joined the chat right during that time there. Mr. Vincent Easley. Yeah, he's a funny Reefer Man. Uh, before that, we had uh, Judas Priest doing Diamonds and Rust. Off of, again, off of that epitaph set. Uh, great stuff, man, great stuff. I, I did not realize that Rob Halford was 69, and apparently uh, his birthday must have been the day after mine. So, uh, wow, us, us Virgos, you know. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Hey, Vinny. And we kicked it off with the doors, five to one. Yep, five one to, to one. Five. No, no one, one here. here gets out alive. Yep, yep, yep. It's, that's, that's, five to that. one, one to five, no one here gets up. And you, he said easily. Oh, now I said it too. He said the E word, me. And uh, well, now I did too. Well, I said his name. <laughs> I said, I said, his, I said his name. Right. Okay. Well, we can't help it, you know. When we see you, we. It's so easily said. It. It's so easily. It's so easily to say. It's so <laughs> easily to say. Easily that said. That doesn't make sense. Easily That's said. Nice. Easily said. Yeah. It's so easily said. <laughs> there you go. No, I just said it again. Oh, there you go. He's laughing his ass off. Oh, baby. Nice to see you, Vinny. Hope all's well and you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you need you're... a computer, dude. I think we should do a fundraiser for Vinny for to get a computer. I thought he had one. I thought he got. I thought he. Well, he's he's not here very much. I think he's only using his phone still. Mm hmm. I think we need to have like a fundraiser for Vinny for to get a, a a laptop. Yeah. You're going to Tennessee soon, though, right, Vin? Yeah, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah, taking a road trip. If you stop by Nashville, tell Billy I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! I just. I'm just so tired of it. Like, fuck you. We had a piece of cloth on my face. You really fucking think that I'm going to fucking... That's going to help anything? Uh, I don't know. You know, you can't breathe right. You're supposed to expel the bad and inhale the good. That's how the body works. It's not natural to breathe through cloth like that. Or paper or whatever the fuck. Right. Neoprene. Neoprene, you can't fucking breathe through that shit. Right. I see people wearing these neoprene. It's like, how can you, why aren't you passed on already? You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you see Billy Strings, tell him I said hi then. Yeah. He'll, the same Moose Girl said hi. He'll, he'll know what I, he, you mean. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm sure he won't, but, you know, oh, you can try. God. He might. I don't know. All right. So anyway, uh, as you were saying before the uh, break there, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that a lot of people just don't believe that the global banksters are in control. Exactly. They don't. They just they 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 believe in the system that they've been taught, that their parents believe in, that they were taught, and so on and so forth. They refuse to even like admit that there could be, you know. It's so, I don't get it, but go ahead, Graham. Okay. Uh, over here on globalresearch.ca, uh, uh, this article was, was published on June 19, 2020. However, it goes back 
to a carefully researched article that was published on June 1st, 2011. And it's called The Federal Reserve Cartel, The Eight Families. So it's, this is actually only part one of a four-part series, but here, here it is. The four horsemen of banking, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo, own the four horsemen of oil, Exxon, Mobil, Royal Dutch Shell, BP, and Chevron, Texaco. Right. In tandem with Deutsche Bank, BNP, Barclays, and other European old money behemoths. Uh, but their monopoly over the global economic economy does not end at the edge of the oil patch. According to the company, right. 10K, 10K filings to the SEC, the four horsemen of banking are among the top 10 stockholders yep. of virtually every Fortune 500 corporation. Yep. Let me read that little sentence again. According to the company 10K filings to the SEC, the four horsemen of banking are among the top ten stockholders of virtually every Fortune 500 corporation. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> All right. So when the stock so who then are the stockholders in these money center banks? This information is guarded much more closely. My queries to bank regulator agent, agencies regarding stock ownership in the top 25 U.S. bank holding companies were given Freedom of Information Act status before being denied on national security grounds. Did you hear that? They're just finding out who these people are that are holding these securities, they're holding these stocks in the the the, the Every Fortune 500 company, that information is withheld on national security grounds. This is rather ironic since many of the bank stockholders actually reside in Europe. One of the most, one, mo one important repository for the wealth of global oligarchy that owns these bank holding companies is U.S. Trust Corporation, founded in 1853. Now, hello. Yeah. Hello. now owned by Bank of America. Right. A hello. A, a recent U.S. trust company director and honoree trustee was Walter Rothschild. Other, Rothschild. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, other other directors include Daniel Davison of J.P. Morgan Chase, Richard Tucker of Exxon Mobil, Daniel Roberts of Citigroup, and Marshall Schwartz of Morgan Stanley. J.W. McAllister was an oil industry insider with the House of Saud connections at Saudi Arabia. Yeah, the, the Royal House of yes. Saud. Yes. Hello. Ding 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 ding. And we, okay, who was? With Bush and the family on nine one one. The Sods. Yes, they were. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> and they got special flights out of here, even though all air traffic was suspended. Right. No, they flew those other fuckers out right away, dude. Don't yep. fool your fucking self, please. Please try not to. So know. so anyway, this uh, J W McAllister who is an insider with the House of Saud, wrote in the Grim Reaper that information he acquired from Saudi bankers cited 80% ownership of New York Federal Reserve Bank. 80%! Uh, by far the most powerful Fed branch. By, but, right, by, hello! But just eight families, of, uh, eight families, four of which reside in the U.S., uh, they are Goldman Sachs, Rockefellers, Lehman's, and Kuhn Loeb's of New York. The Rothschilds of Paris and London, the Warburgs of Hamburg, the Lazards of Paris, and the Israeli Moses, uh, uh, Mo Moses Sefs of Rome. Uh, CPA Thomas D. Schauf collaborates McAllister's claims, adding that 10 banks control all 12 Federal Reserve ba uh, Bank branches. He names N.M. Rothschilds of London, Rothschilds Bank of Berlin, Warburg Bank of Hamburg, Warburg Bank of Amsterdam, Lehman Brothers of New York, Lazard Brothers of Paris. Yep, I uh, posted a similar article in the chat not too long ago on Rebel List, and we even talked about our freakers, I remember. Go ahead, Graham. Yeah. Uh, Kuhnlo Bank of New York, yep. Israel Moses of Seif Bank of Italy, Goldman Sachs of New York, J.P. Morgan yep. Chase of New York, 
shelf list, yep. uh, w- William Rockefeller, Paul Warburg, Jacob Schiff, and uh, James Stillman as individuals who own large shares of the Fed. The Schiff's insiders are Kuhn Loeb. The Stillmans are city group insiders who married in to the Rockefeller clan at the turn of the century. Uh, Eustace Mullins came to the same conclusion in his book, The Secrets of the Federal Reserve, in which he yep. displays charts connecting the Fed and its member banks to the families of the Rothschilds, Warburg, Rockefeller, That's and, a very well known book too. and the others. Uh, the, the, the control these banking families exert over global economy cannot be overstated and is quite intentionally shrouded in secrecy. The corporate media arm... Uh, their corporate media arm, is quick to discredit any information exposing its private central banking cartel as conspiracy theory. Yet, the facts remain. Now, I'm not going to go through and read this whole article to you. It's quite lengthy. But uh, you get the uh, flavor and the sense of, of that from there. And if you don't understand that these banksters not only control all of your governments, but all of the media which feeds you the propaganda that you take in and sinks into your head and makes you think there's this big battle between in the U.S. here between the Republicans and the Democrats, read this. And Wait, try leave and, that. Try, Educate your fucking self, please. Try please. to understand. I, I beg of you. It's all a freaking game, and you are the pawns. Yes. And, and they kill you off. You're left. Please see that. Please see. <laughs> I, I beg of you. I, I don't know how else to word it, but I really urge you to fucking educate yourself. I, we talked about the, I, it's the same article I read like two months ago, Graham. Yeah. Well, anyway, they got. It is. It doesn't matter. It, it it bears to be repeated. They have notes and references to all of the information in this article at the bottom here. I believe you better than, than you read the article and they believe me when I read the article. Okay? Uh, who knows? The same fucking article. I know what it is. I read it on Freakers a couple months ago, and now you're reading it. Maybe they'll believe you more than because I know, you know, maybe you have a stronger voice or a masculine voice. Uh, who knows? I, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was probably the same one. This was put out June 19th, 2020, so... Yep, uh, that is the same article I but, read. But again, based on an article going back to 2011. Right, so, and uh, it's true. It's fact. It is that fact. That's in control and running the show, okay? Yep, so you got it's eight... not a president of any country, because these this is a global thing. These people are global. They're yeah. not just uh, one country or another. No, this is a global network, right, Grim? It is, absolutely. It's global. It's worldwide. It's not just the United States. It's not just Great Britain. It's not just Africa. It's not just China. You guys, you guys gotta re- you, you should research and learn. That's all I can say. I mean, I knew about this shit when we first started doing this show. So, um, you know, we've been trying to, you know, educate or help people, I guess. Or you know, just put information out there. Um, a lot of people, I've got you know, I've there's been several people through the years that I've like showed our site to, you know, or I've given them the link to it, you know. Yeah. And I and there's some of them I know in person. <clears throat> I've gotten most of the comment is is you're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yeah. fine. You know, if you want to think that, that's all right. You know, I'm fine with that. You can think that all you want, but I think that's just coming from a place of fear, that statement, you know, because you don't know if what I'm saying is right or not. You know, and now you're like, hmm. Hmm. You know, yep, so maybe you gotta, you gotta, there's you gotta, something to it. Like, you, have, you have eight families running the world. Right. Eight families providing you all of the the information that you think is real, which is not. Right. You got right. uh, these people. So they control the media. So you, you think you know, that media. you're out there voting and electing people? You ain't doing shit. <laughs> no, you're not. You're, you, it's 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 to make you think that you're making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, voting yeah. process. It's to make you think that it's the illusion of choice. Oh yeah, I'm doing my civic duty really right right it's it's not it's not that it's just a show it's an act 
Okay. Because they know they're still in control. It don't matter if it's a Democrat or Republican president. It, it does really does not. not matter to the banksters. The agenda does not whoever's change. Whoever's in there, what, what's wrong? I said the agenda does not change regardless of political stripe. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I just don't know how people can't see that. They just jump on this bandwagon. They're like, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Yeah. You know, they just want to be right so bad that it makes them be like nasty people. They your just, guy, your guy is bad and evil. My guy is great and good. Right. And if you believe in that guy, then <laughs> you're evil too. Right. You know what I mean? How dare you not believe what I think? Or not think what I think. (laughs) So how lame and immature is that? This is like middle school shit. Sure. This behavior. You know, it's like, why can't you just have a a discussion with someone that differs in in their opinion? In your opinion. Yeah. You know, why do you have to be like mega nasty? You know what I'm saying? Because you're so, like, determined that your guy's better, or your person is better, that you're willing to just be a nasty person. That, that to me, that's lame, dude. If, if, if what you believe in makes you be that, I don't think I would be going for that. I'd be like, okay, this makes me be a nasty person to people. Like, what the fuck? Yep, you yep, know? exactly. Like, I don't get that. Like, why would you... Treat someone like shit just because they don't believe the same uh, way it's, it's you do, but that they're still a human. They, they buy the, they mean? buy the they buy the propaganda. It's, they're all brainwashed. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, I guess that's okay. That's I, 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 how it's, there's yeah. no other way to explain it. There's no there's no other way. Right. They, they hear right. it on the TV. They believe it, and they, and they think, well, we have these experts saying this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Whatever. All right, I got a few. But, yeah. I got yeah, I got go a few ahead. a few quick hitters here to do. Okay. Um. All right. This first one, I, I don't know the actual significance of this, but here it is. Uh, okay. Space station study finds bacteria can survive years in outer space. So okay. Uh, so already named the toughest bacteria on Earth by Guinness Book of World Records, which. I didn't know that was a Guinness category. Um, uh, d- d- whatever this is, Diana Cockle Ratney Onras uh, has shattered new galactic record, longest known survival in open space. A team of Japanese researchers interested in panspermia, the theory that life can transfer or has transferred from one planet to another, found the UV resistance bacteria survived three years on the side of the International Space Station and could possibly live long enough in space to make the trip to Mars. So they're bringing their bacteria to Mars. Not that Mars wouldn't already have bacteria if bacteria can survive in space all that long and it's already out there. Um, (laughs) The results suggest radio-resistant Dionococcus could survive during the travel from Earth to Mars and vice versa. Uh, oh, oh, the vice versa could be a problem, oh, which is several months or years in the shortest orbit. So anyway, the uh, like I said, I don't know really the significance of that other than, okay, if you're going to be bringing bacteria back from Mars, that could be an issue. That could be a problem. Uh, so anyway, there's that. This next one, I, <laughs> I kind of like the guy. And I'm not sure, I don't, I'm not, I don't really get his point exactly, but um, I tend to want to agree with him. Uh, you're, you're all familiar with Van Morrison, right? The musician, Van Morrison. Yes, I know you are. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Okay, so this article on uh, Loudersound.com, Van Morrison attacks the pseudoscience behind socially distanced concerts. So I want to agree with him on that, and I think he's right uh, on that, because the, there is no actual science. It is all pseudoscience, as we've discussed yep. in the previous articles, about right. how the social distancing, the masks, and the lockdown oh, yep, yep. doesn't work. So it's all pseudoscience. Right. Van right. Morrison says his upcoming socially distanced shows have been organized not out of acceptance of the current state of affairs, but to get his band out of the doldrums. So he's going to go ahead and do concerts in that, that, that socially distanced manner 
just to get his band out there and working. So uh, he has issued a statement calling on artists to fight the pseudoscience behind the socially, socially distanced concerts. Morrison will play a series of socially, di socially distanced shows in London and at Newcastle goes for oh, yeah, Park great. in the coming weeks, but he's spoken out saying they've been organized, as I said, not out of the current state of affairs, but just to get his band out there. He also right. cl claimed that... I kind of get it, you know... So he claims that he and Andrew Lloyd Webber are the only people in the music business trying to get it back up and running normally. No, that's not fucking true at all. Well, that's you know whatever. He's an old. Right. He's I, an old. He's, a, he's an old guy. So let him. Let, right. let, him, let him say his piece. Yep. Uh, and and you know he's a big name, so maybe it'll help. He is, he is definitely a big name. You yep, know, maybe it'll help. I don't know. Um, I do. I do love him. Where I mean, one of my favorite songs of all time is "Brown Eyed Girl." I so mean, he says. Uh, he says. He says, I, "I call on my fellow singers, musicians, writers, producers, mm -hmm. promoters, and others in the industry to fight with me on this. Come forward, stand up, and fight the pseudosciences. Speak up." Mm hmm And yeah, wow. I, I, I'm with you on that, Van. I appreciate it. Okay, and finally, for those of you with older machines. That want to mm -hmm. keep them going. That want to like do computers, something. Computers, you mean? Yeah, yeah, computers, computers. Right. I, I should have so said that. Machine, so I know. Like, I, I, what, what kind of machine? I should no, have been specific understand. with older computers that want to keep <laughs> okay. them going. I found here on TechWorm.net, mm -hmm. posted uh, today, get posted today, posted today. The mm -hmm. best lightweight, lightweight <laughs> Linux distros of 2020. Um, so th th this is uh, this is a, is a good article for all you folks out there. Anyway, they list Tiny Core, Lubuntu, Puppy Linux, Antix, Peppermint OS, Bodhi Linux, Sparky Linux, Debian, React OS, and Lyxel. And it goes through here and it describes and tells you uh, why these are, in their opinion, uh, the best lightweight uh, ones you could use. But you don't need much to run any of these these OSs. Uh, I mean, you're you're talking okay, about cool. just a minimum 46 megabytes of RAM, any x86 Intel processor, 49 megabits of disk disk space. You can pull the oldest computer out of your closet, and it'll run Tiny Linux. Wow, tiny, <laughs> tiny core. And so, uh, puppy well, Linux. Oh yeah, don't throw away or get rid of your old computers. <laughs> yeah, you could run all these, man. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, so, there's the, you. You can make it so they'll work again. You know, if you hell yeah, OS. it's it's a, it's a you know, yeah. and, and it's a it, these are good solid OS. And everyone was so afraid of Linux when, when it first was known because they're like, oh my god, it's not Windows. Right, right, it's right. It's like, right. but you know what? Depending on which Linux you use, it looks almost identical to Windows. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's just like if you, unless you're a total idiot. You won't. You should have no problem switching from Windows to a Linux program at no all. Problem at all. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. Right. No. I've done it. I had to on that one machine that was so bad at one time, like five years, six years ago. Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! I had to. Otherwise, I would not be able to use that computer. I would not have been able to. Right. You know, it was so terrible. It was bad. All right. Well, we got to do the last set here. All right. Let's do that. And say hello to a man named Joe. All right, so we can... Oh, yeah. Oh, Black Betty there. There's a Betty Page dancing around there. Uh, to the Black Betty song by Ram Jam. Uh, before that, we had uh, Buffalo Spring... Well, not Buffalo Springfield. Buffalo Springsfield cover uh, by Del McCory Band and Friends doing For What It's Worth. And we kicked it off there with Joe Bonamassa, a uh, new day uh, yesterday. So uh, yes, indeed, yeah, Joey B. Is that, that's the uh, 20th anniversary edition, by the way. That that was mm -hmm. recorded 20 years ago. He just re-released it this week. So uh, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. Anyway, um, let's gonna wrap it up. I know we're a few minutes over here, but right. uh, that happens when we get to yapping it about does. stuff, you know. So, uh, <laughs> occasionally it happens, you know, we do our best here and Grim, you're awesome at what you do. So you're pretty, pretty spectacular. Yeah. Man. Yeah. 
I'm just saying. You are. You're spectacular. Well, thanks, so. Moose. So are you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm not joking. I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm serious when I say I, that. I'm I understand. Not, like, I understand. Around. I understand. All right, All right tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow, you get everybody the, tomorrow, you, tomorrow you get the dark table at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern with Flash and Grammy. She'll be around for mm-hmm. the weekends. Uh, she's not around on Tuesdays for that show presently because right. of yep. other, other things going on. I'll be on Sunday morning with the blues and the trivia and the such like yeah. that. Uh, follow it's up. a good way to hang on a Sunday, you know. Yeah, that, and that's, uh, what is that, noon Eastern. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, followed up by Hal Anthony at 3 Eastern mm-hmm. uh, was behind the woodshed. And then on Monday, 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 2 p.m. Eastern, myself New and... Circle and Grim are pairing up and doing a show. It, they're doing all connect. It's all connected together. Yeah, we're going to do It's All Connected. Yeah. And it'll be my, should, myself yeah, yeah. and Circle, and it, it'll be awesome. It, she'll, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. She'll, she'll be a great. I, I just have a feeling it's gonna be fucking awesome. She'll be a great show host. So uh, yeah. that, that's it. It'll be uh, good. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? You got anything else? Uh, no. Just you know, have a good one and be safe and stay safe and be smart and research and do whatever you gotta do. I mean, I don't know. Prep, buy gold, buy silver. I don't know. I'll yeah. Be- yeah. All right. All right well, it. have a great weekend, everybody. Yep. Peace. Peace.